Modifying this Boyd's Pro Varmint stock has turned out to be a bigger job than I originally anticipated. That epoxy that they put on the outside of this, and you can still see a couple little areas clinging, uh, it's very tough stuff, and it took some some very rough sandpaper to remove it. This is 60 grit, and this is what I've been using all over this thing. This is just a uh, chunk of 2x4 that I have some of this stuff wrapped around, and I've been using it on these flat surfaces here on the buttstock and then on the forearm as well. And the only sections that I've really had to work really hard at and use something more than sandpaper, uh, I use this Nicholson number 49 rasp, um, is through here in the grip up into the wrist. The wrist modifications, I mentioned before, uh, the wrist on the stock as it comes, it's just ugly. And so I've had to reshape this thing to give it a nice smooth arc from the hand grip up into this wrist area and get rid of that proud kind of ducktail thing that they had sticking off the back. So this looks a lot better, but the most important thing is how this grip feels. And for this, what I've been doing, and this is going to be different for your individual hand, is I just place my hand on here, and mostly I want to do this from the actual position that I'll be shooting from. If I'm making a uh, an offhand standing rifle, I'm going to actually hold this in a standing position and see how things feel. It, this is my prone rifle, so I've been testing this in the prone, but for now I can kind of feel this too, just laying here along the, uh, the side of the stock here in the vise. But what I'm feeling for is I'm feeling for kind of proud sections. This is like the, uh, the princess and the pea, where I'm feeling for little areas that are touching my hand where there's just more pressure than anywhere else. And most of what I was getting when this stock uh, before I really modified anything on here is there was a lot of material right here under uh, the meat of my hand here kinda on the heel and this is stuff that had to be removed so that I could get a nice comfortable grip back here with the heel of my hand I have removed a lot of material back through here a lot here and a lot here where again I have more meat on my hand and this is actually feeling very, very good right now. If I could, I would take away a little bit more back here under the heel. But at this moment, I have about an inch of laminate uh, left here at the back of the grip. And I probably don't want to get too much thinner than that. Laminate is tough, but I don't want to tempt things by making an overly thin stock. I don't want to have any sections that might break. And as it is, it feels quite good, especially in the prone where I have my, uh, my wrist at a, a more severe angle. Uh, this thing feels really, really nice. And now my job is to blend all of these lines. I can see that there are a few uh, sections where the blending hasn't gone perfectly, like right here. This is a little bit proud, so that needs to come down. And all of this just needs to blend a little bit more. And for that, Mostly what I'm using, and on any of these curved surfaces, I'm using sandpaper just wrapped around a dowel. And you can use dowels of different sizes for different curvatures that you need. But this is working very well. And one of my other little uh, tricks that I like to use, these super cheap diamond files that you can get at you know a Harbor Freight or any of your uh, uh, local hardware stores, uh, these things work really well for some of these small areas that need to be modded. Uh, for instance, you have this one that has a curved section on one side and a flat on the other. This is great for making minute changes in areas here, and it's rather fine. So you don't get any you know big rough sections that have to be cleaned up excessively with sandpaper later. And then you have flat ones like this that are very nice for sections that need to be kept flat like this one. So these I find very handy. Here's a quick tip for any of you that want to reshape your stocks. The light is your best friend and angles are very important. If, uh, if I'm trying to make very nice smooth curved surfaces then what I can do is, okay, if I have a high light like this 
Uh, I can't really tell what's going on. I can start to read some of the uh, the lines in the laminate, and that will tell me something. But if you start angling your light, you can start to see some of your high points that need fixing. For example, you can see through here that this is pretty uneven. It needs some more work. We have a couple high points that need to be taken down. And all of this just needs to be blended in a little bit better. You are looking at a top-down view of the barrel in the barrel channel here. And you can see with the light right under it that uh, I do have some clearance issues. I do have uh, a big section of clearance right through here on this side. This one is definitely open over here the laminate is actually pressing right against the barrel. So this is going to take a little bit of work to get this cleared out. Normally I would have enough room on these so that I could just uh, thread in a sheet of paper to protect the barrel and then some sandpaper and just kind of work this back and forth until I get plenty of clearance. But it looks like I'm going to have to work a dowel with some sandpaper inside here to uh, actually make enough room to even get paper in there. So I'm going to remove some stuff from this side and then we'll come back and use some sandpaper to get a nice clean edge right along the barrel. After a little work with the sandpaper, I can get a sheet of paper in there. But I want to make sure that under barrel whip and whatever else conditions that nothing can ever contact. So I'm going to take some, this is I think 320 grit sandpaper, and I'm going to thread these together and just make sure that I have clearance at every angle. Okay, so that's a bit tight right there. Just work that section for a bit. And just like that, we have nice, neat clearance on each side. This barrel is now totally free floated. I apologize for the audio between my ragged voice and uh, kids and dogs and lawnmowers. It's a uh, it's pretty noisy out here, but uh, today it is one week until the competition and I have finished shaping the rifle, but I have not done anything to finish it out. And I was trying to think of all kinds of ways to, uh, to paint this or to stain it. And you know, in the end, I really like the way that this blonde laminate looks. I've never seen anything like this and it contrasts really well against the, uh, the black of the action. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to polyurethane this. Now I have some ideas for when I get a little bit more time. I might take that polyurethane off and uh, do some kind of really mad paint job on this thing. I have some uh, kind of wild ideas. But for now, I'm just going to cover this and I'm going to shoot it as it is. And I've gone over this even up to 600 grit sandpaper. And this thing is super fine, really smooth. And it feels fantastic. I'll get more into the shape of how this ended up after I finish this off. I have the stock just hanging here from a wire and I used an air compressor to blast away any remnants of sawdust that might be on this, get everything out of the nooks and crannies. And now it's time for that first coat of polyurethane. Polyurethane coat one of three has finished drying and it looks very nice. I'm not seeing any air bubbles, which is great. So it's time to sand this thing down. I'm going to use some 600 grit sandpaper to make it nice and smooth. And then time for coat number two.
three coats of polyurethane and this thing is finished. It's ready to fire. And I must say that I think it just looks gorgeous. Uh, the coloration, some people aren't going to like this sort of thing. They're going to prefer a stained wood or paint or anything like that. But this is the first time I've really seen kind of a blonde laminate before. And I really like the way that it came out. To me, it reminds me of a, a bowling lane. And it kind of smells like one too since the, the polyurethane is still going to be drying over the next few days, I'm sure. Uh, there are some really neat holographic effects in the wood when the light hits it right. I'm sure the camera won't be able to pick this up, but if you actually look at it with your own two eyes, there are some neat effects in some sections of the wood. Uh, but, you know, even more than just the, uh, the appearance of this and the lines that I cleaned up and the, uh, the thinning of the wrist right here, it feels fantastic. Uh, I gave it a little asymmetry on the, uh, the grip, so it feels really nice. There's uh, just a nice place to lay my thumb across the top. And this is going to be a real pleasure to shoot in the prone.